but it had a orphan adoption daddy kink which I can say with certainty I am not a fan it's just like no thank you you know just not not for me what the heck did I just read everybody it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my December wrap-up for 2022. I read a total of 17 books this month so I'm splitting this wrap-up into two parts so here are the first couple of books that I read so without further ado let us get started. The first book that I have is Cats and Jammer and this is by Franca Zappia and I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. So this follows Cat and her classmates who are trapped inside their school. They have no recollection of how they got there or why they are unable to leave. Many of the students are turning into creatures including Cat herself whose face is turning into a cat mask made out of her own hardening flesh. A killer is lurking the hallways looking for their next victim while Kat and her best friend Jeffrey search for the killer's true identity while trying to find a way out and it's like the story of that. This story alternates between the past and the present which I think definitely helped make this story a little bit more interesting. It is a horror novel which has a lot of gory scenes so if that's a trigger for you maybe don't pick this book up. I think that the short chapters made this a very easy read and I was intrigued with trying to figure out the mystery behind why Kat and her classmates were unable to leave the school. The ending left me a little bit dissatisfied. I wasn't expecting the way that it ended. I do think that it was an interesting concept and I think that the idea was there but it just left me with very mixed feelings upon completion so I gave it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I have is The Good Lie by A.R. Tor and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows psychiatrist Gwen Moore who treats patients that have violent urges. Those like the bloody heart killer who has abducted and killed six teenagers. When the seventh victim escapes and identifies the killer as a high school science teacher, the town can finally relax. Stevens attorney Richard Cavins' son was one of these victims and he is convinced that this science teacher is not guilty and so he decides that he is going to represent this man on trial. He hires Dr. Moore to create a psychological profile on the BH killer that he can use in court. But as the two spend more time together and grow closer, Gwen is convinced that Richard is hiding something. I was instantly pulled into this story and trying to figure out who the bloody heart killer was. I was so invested in trying to figure it out because every single person in this book is lying in some way so it was really fun trying to piece the little breadcrumbs that you're given throughout the story. I wasn't able to call the ending which was very refreshing because I'm pretty good at doing that. I was not expecting the turn that it took. I had some guesses and I ended up being partially right with the outcome. You definitely need to suspend your believability a little bit especially when it comes to certain moves that the psychiatrist takes. In the real world it definitely would not happen but it was still a good time. I also really enjoyed how there was a tiny bit of romance in this but it didn't completely overpower the mystery aspect of the book. I think that it was a very good balance so I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. The next book that I have is The Embalmer by Rain Havoc. I ended up giving this a 2 out of 5 stars. It was definitely not my favorite of Rain Havoc's books. If you're interested in the other books that I've read by this author check out my October or November wrap-up because I read their entire backlist. This was the last one that I needed to to read but this one was a huge disappointment. This basically follows a woman named Sadie who works as an embalmer at a funeral home. She's working one night when she becomes tempted by a male corpse and things just kind of escalate from there. Like I said this is not my favorite Rain Havoc work. I'm not 100% sure if it was supposed to be satire or if it was for serious but if it was meant to be satire then like it was a good time. If it was meant to be for serious what the heck did I just read? This is a very predictable read. You knew what was going to happen a mile away, which definitely brought my enjoyment down of the story. This is also not as gory or graphic as a lot of Rain's other works, so if you're looking to get like into Rain Havoc's works, then this might be a good one for you, but I just was not a fan of it, so two out of five stars. Okay, the rest of the books that I have are all like Christmassy holiday novellas because your girl was trying to get her Goodreads goal up, so you know, December's a perfect time to just read Christmas novellas. So this next one is called Enticing the Scrooge by Jessa Kane, and I hated this book. I gave it a one out of five stars. This follows Edison Scrooge, who in order to receive his great-grandfather's inheritance, he must marry before Christmas. So while he is hosting a party in order to find his future wife, he 
hears a knock on the door and it is a young beggar named Blessing who is almost frozen from the cold. He instantly falls in love with this very young girl and decides that he is going to make her his wife and he is not taking no for an answer. So that's the concept. This um, was not good. Uh, it might be the worst book that I've read this year, but it had a orphan adoption daddy kink, which I can say with certainty, I am not a fan. This man is 30 something and he basically kidnaps this just turned 18 year old and basically turns her into his sex slave. Like this man is so unhinged, the amount of times that he forces himself onto Blessing is ridiculous. And basically his whole reasoning and like justification of why he is able to do this is because she's too enticing, hot, sexy, and beautiful to control himself. It's just like, no thank you, you know, just not, not for me. But um, he became so obsessed with her that when she would go out to town, she would have to have a full security team. And then when she would come home, he would interrogate her and give her consequences because other men were staring at her and that meant that they wanted to sleep with her and therefore she had to be punished for that. And I just, just white. I also just hated how naive Blessing was. You're gonna tell me that this girl didn't even know what an erection was, but she was able to do all these things that he made her do effortlessly the very first time she did them. Like, it, it's not a thing. I'm sorry. And also, um, I just want to say if you've read this book, what was that writing scene where she was literally spinning on his dick like the exorcist? I just, what did I just read? It's just one star. I would not recommend reading this book, but that's just me. The next book I have is Be Terrible by my friend Molly Lakovich. Hopefully I said her name right this time. I give this a four out of five stars. I love Molly's writing. This follows Monica who one night has an intruder in her home that she inherited from her late grandmother. She ends up going and finding a gun, shooting the intruder, and she quickly realizes that the intruder is none other than Krampus, the Yule Devil. Enraged that he has just been shot, uh, he kidnaps her and brings her to the Veil Between Worlds where he plans to punish her in the most delicious ways. Like I said, I eat up anything Molly writes. I love her storytelling. They're just so much fun and she always has a lot of smut but she also has a backstory to the smut which I love because a lot of smut books, I'm sorry there's no plot but there's always a plot with Molly's writing. I really hated Krampus in the beginning, which I think is the point. He definitely pulls on your heartstrings throughout the book. Like by the end, like he's all right. I just think that this was such a fun December novella. I mean, you can read it any time of the year, but if you're looking for a Christmassy novella with a little bit of spiciness, then pick up Molly's work because so fun. Next up, we have Winter Love by Lulu Lucille, and I gave this a two out of five stars. So this follows Olivia who moved to London, but is returning to her small town of Copperfield in order to spend Christmas with her family. When she arrives, the first person that she runs into is her old best friend, Tabitha, who she has not spoken to since she left seven years ago. Olivia was hopelessly in love with Tabitha and she can't help but feel that connection is still present. So as she spends more time with Tabitha, they rekindle their friendship slash maybe a little bit more. This novella was okay. I don't think it was anything special. I didn't really believe the connection between Tabitha and Olivia. Olivia, I'm just saying if my best friend left me and then didn't talk to me for seven years, I sure as hell would not be rushing into a relationship with her as soon as I saw her again. Couldn't be me. I also was not the biggest fan of Olive, which made it very hard to enjoy the story. I just think that she was very immature and the way that she handled a lot of things in this book was just very childish in my opinion, so it is what it is. I do really love the cover though but the story wasn't for me, so two out of five stars. Next up is Candy, Coded Curves by Kat Baxter, and I give this three out of five stars. This follows Ronnie, who works in Nash's candy shop, and she cannot deny her attraction to her boss. Nash feels the same way about Ronnie, but believes that he is too old to be her type, so he dismisses his urges. Ronnie decides that she is going to take matters into her own hands and get Nash to notice her, and it's like the story of that. This was a very quick, 
quick, easy read. I am a sucker for the fake dating trope, so I loved how that came into play in this. I really like the two main characters together in their relationship, but I also really like them as individuals as well. Ronnie seemed very sweet with a sassy side that complemented Nash's grumpy side, so we got the grumpy sunshine, which I love. My only big complaint with this was the ending. I just felt that it was very rushed, so I was very dissatisfied with it, so I ended up only giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. Next up is Cabin Kisses by Hope Ford, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So this follows Georgina, who finds her fiancé in bed with another woman, and so she decides that she is going to take their honeymoon alone on Ski Mountain. There she meets the owner of the inn, Levi, who she can't help be drawn to, but she's very hesitant because she has just been recently hurt hurt. But then Mother Nature decides that there's going to be a blizzard on Christmas Eve, which causes them to be shut into a cabin together alone, and things spark from there. This is another perfect Christmas novella. I really liked Levi. Big fan. He was just so sweet and caring and patient and loving towards Gina. He never pressured her into going further than she was ready. I also really liked Gina and I loved how we got to see her work through the hurt feelings that she had towards Robert with Levi and ended up happy in the end. I really liked how this was told from dual point of view so we got to see inside both of the characters heads which I really think helped move the story along. I just want more of these two. I think they are so sweet and I would love to see like a full story about them, but it was a lot of fun, 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up I have Highway Holiday by Lainey Lane and I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. This follows Briella who has been touring with the band Purple Midnight for the past year and she wants nothing more than to spend Christmas with her family. Fellow bandmate Finlay offers to drive her home on the tour bus so that she is not alone for the travel. Briella agrees but as they spend more time alone she cannot deny the spark that she feels towards him any longer and it's the story of that. This was an okay read. I wasn't the biggest fan of the way it was written. It was a lot of telling you what was happening and not a lot of showing. It just became very annoying very quickly. I did like the two main characters enough, but I just could not care less about their love story. I was just kind of bored throughout the whole thing, so two out of five stars. And then the last Christmassy novella I have is Our Snowy Night by Ella Good, and I give this a 3.5 out of five stars. In a desperate attempt to save his marriage, a man named Rowan decides to whisk his wife Charlie off to a secluded cabin in the woods after she serves him divorce papers. When they arrive, they are quickly snowed into this cabin, which allows Rowan to begin his master plan of winning Charlie back. This was fun for what it was. I wouldn't say it was anything groundbreaking. I definitely think that this would have been better if it was a full-length novel so that we could get a backstory on these characters and learn more about them. I'm not the biggest fan of the miscommunication trope and I think that basically their entire issue with each other would have been solved if they had just communicated from the beginning instead of him having to trap her in this secluded cabin. But I mean at least they got there in the end. If you're looking for a holiday romance novella with some light smut then this one might be for you. It was fine. 3.5 out of 5. And then the final book that I'll talk about is a horror book because we gotta end off on a bang, but this is Relentless by Christopher Art. I give this one a 3 out of 5 stars. It follows a group of girls that after a night of drinking they wake up in a forest all separated from each other with no memory of how they got there. They quickly realize as they are being taken out one by one that they are being hunted and it's the story of them trying to survive. So from the very beginning of this book I can't say I was not intrigued by the concept. It's very similar to the hunted movie where rich people hunt less rich people. I went into this completely blind so I didn't know what it was about. All I knew is that it was a survival horror story. So as the story unfolded, as I kept reading, I was very interested to see what was going to happen next. The chapters are so incredibly short it made it very easy to read and I'm also a huge fan of strong female characters so I really loved that aspect of the book. I will say that the story did become very repetitive pretty quickly. It was fun for what it was. I will say though that the ending 
complete crap. Hated it so much, but it is what it is. If you're looking for a very quick horror novella, pick this one up. It was fun. All right, everybody, so those are the books that I'm going to talk about for part one of my wrap-up for December 2022. If you're interested in the other couple of books that I read, then I will leave the link to the video down below once it's uploaded, and you guys can check those out. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye! Yeah.